Thank you. Hello, I'm Alice Strong and I'm a process leader in the leather shop. Um, one of my areas is seat sewing for um, all models of the Rolls Royce. Um, and I'm going to talk through my illustrated version of the um, economic, uh, ergonomic and layout sewing operation. So, just a little bit about what the operation is. So, as a sewing machinist, it consists of machine program input. Um, machine setup, so that's threading up the machine, needle changes, feet changes, collection of materials, um, processing materials on the machines, and then distribution of, pro of the process materials. So within the area they're targeted to do 13 units, which is the volume that's set on the company. Um, so that means the attack time is 34 minutes. After doing work studies, um, we've realised that the best way to achieve this is through the four stations. Um, so the stations flow through from having a car set come in. Um, station one will sew the fleece, insert and top stitch. Then it will go to station two, which does the first stage of construction, into station three for the final stage of construction, and to stage four for the final fitting, so that's having profiles to be taped to touch. Um, it's a direct flow um, and it's based around the product, the, the layout is based around the product um, to increase efficiency. So each station will have the machines that's required for builds within that, um, so the associates aren't expected to walk from one end of the room to the other to get to their machine. Um, so it's really minimised um, motion and increased productivity. Um, so the operator has a lot to do with the machine, so there's a lot of interactions and interfaces. Um, some of the um, interactions that they have between the operator and um, the machine is the setup, the threading up, um, there's barcode scanning on the airbags, so again, it's a poky oak system, so the airbag won't be able, be able to um, do the seam unless the barcode's been scanned for the correct um, airbag material. Um, as well as the feed, speed and placement of the material through the machine, and obviously the collection and distribution of the materials once it's processed. It's all controlled by, by the operator. Um, there are ergonomic and layout features to fit the situation, so um, to aid it, there's to aid the interaction between the operator and the um, machine itself, we have to consider things such as posture, reaching position, um, the workspace size and the workload that's expected to be on it. Um, so because of this, the machines have been set up for the workbenches to have adjustable height. Um, the chairs are all adjustable for the back, the tilt, um, to make it as comfortable as possible for the operator. The pedal that operates the speed of the machine can be moved forward and backwards so that if you have longer legs, it, it, it can suit the operator's needs. Um, lighting is fixed above the machines for for best positioning, um, as well as having a spotlight. So if someone has need for more lighting, it's there on hand. Um, and other solutions also include training, having more regular breaks, um, etc. So that if someone is struggling with sitting in a position for a long time, then they can get up and move around more, more often. Um, so that's the workstation. So the actual layout itself, as I said before, has been designed with features um, based around the influencing features. So we obviously were restrained by floor size, um, delivery and exit points for logistics, health and safety factors like um, exits and walkways. Um, we have to think about the accessibility as well as the volume of product and material flow, um, and things such as right first time. So 
So for the floor layer itself, um, we've tried to incorporate having the machines close, close as possible to each other for use of um, the operators. This has minimised the motion and waste of time within the tank. It's a sequential flow of product through, throughout, so basically this car set will just skip on through to the next station, so there's no waste of having to run round and this person complete a whole car and move it to the end. Um, as well as the customer from the end of sewing is literally the next department, so it's a few metres away, so it, it just gives a... Um, it just gives a, a, a better flow of the material. Um, it also minimises the work in progress that, that throughout because it's a, from looking at the value stream map and such, we have indicated um, the minimal amount of material that needs to be in process at once to um, maximise profit. Um, And there are lots of information and data that we need to consider. So, like I said before, we have work studies that went into this. So we had time studies of the whole process, um, equipment usage, so how much that that machine is in use, how many minutes worth, how many minutes they could touch um, a hammer for, how often the speed changes are, that sort of thing, so that we can get a better idea of how to minimise those as much as possible. Um, also, it was looked at ergonomic features such as reach positioning, um, the right first time, so how to minimise, how to maximise the speed the amount on a machine so that the skill level is really high for one for one machine load. So all the top stitch is done by two operators rather than seven. So they're really good at what they're doing on that job. Um, from that data that it collected, um, the techniques that we use, so for example, time studies, once we've got all those times, then we put them into a Yamazumi chart. So this is the whole car broken down into front cushion, front squab. And then we looked at where best we can collect all the parts that are done on one machine. So all the top stitch, how, how we can split that down into 34 minutes. Um, construction, so as you can see that we've had all the final fittings and profiles done right at the end by, by one operator rather than spreading it out and having to change the feet maximum times. Um, this data then can be shown into graphs, statistics, um, diagrams, um, which allow all the associates to understand why we're doing these things so they can see the improvement that's actually happening. Um, and And then we have a, a good way yeah, of basically presenting, it, it shows a clear reasoning for potential changes that we want to input. So I think that this is a good, this is generally a, a good layout as it is of the current situation um, because it has minimised all the waste of the machine and motion um, and maximised the utilisation of the machines. Um, as well as reduce the ergonomic risk. However, I do feel like there is some hypothetical improvements that we could put in place. For example, as you can see, the material is flowing in a straight line, and at the minute it's pushing on the trolley, whereas we could incorporate a conveyor belt to move the material every 34 minutes, as was the cycle time of the business, and the tap time of the business. Um, and another idea is to possibly um, input the fleece sewing on a fully automated machine so it recognises the shape and the sews around the edge. Um, that's something to look into the future. It's still not quite, um, quite perfected yet within the, within the industry. So just, uh, I've got a few questions. Yep. About <clears throat> so with this se sequential model, mm -hmm. what, uh, can you just tell me what, what's the time scale for it to get through that sequence? 
So it's four stations times 34, so 148, maybe, is that right? A couple of hours then. Yeah. yeah. But every, four, every 34 minutes a car comes off the line. So in each station there is a car, so every 34 minutes a car comes off the line intact. And what happens if a station was lit? We have, um, so basically we have a floating head who would come on, who does like extra different orders for, and who is more flexible, so they can jump on to aid um, any problems that we are having. So that lateness doesn't cascade through the sequence. No, it, it and we stopped. do have like a two or three car buffer at the end, so there is a little bit of back within the system, so we don't affect anywhere else. And on, on the process that you've talked about, how do you gather the input from the associates about how they're feeling about the work and how they think about the break times that they have? So we have regular feedback. Any changes that happen, we'll have a wash-up meeting at the end of the day. So um, associates gather around. They can either write down their feedback if they don't want to visualise it out yeah. to the group. Um, but most of them are very confident and are happy to suggest changes because it's, it's improving their own area. Um, we have a what worked well, what's not worked so well, so that we can improve on it for the following time. And so the, the so associates make suggestions. Mm -hmm. Those suggestions are then, some of them would be seen as important to look at further. Yeah. So and the suggestion must be turned into data that is analysed somehow. So how does that take place? Um, so, for example, we had someone suggests that they're changing their feet too, too often, um, the machine feet, which would sell the piping. Um, and suggested that perhaps we could have one person sewing all the piping so that they reduced that foot change. So we initially timed the how it currently is, um, and then trialled it out for I think it was a, it was a whole shift, so 13 cars were to see whether that reduced the time. And I think it was about I think it saved about I don't know about. 30 minutes throughout the day, which is obviously quite a lot, so that got incorporated later on for the, for the next sequence of changes. Um, but it is a time study, so whatever suggested, we time it before and after. And then the other thing would be that the company has greater demand from the customers, therefore there's a company director that might drive your tag time down. Yeah. And how do you go about work and how you could do that then? So we have, you know, we are working towards the VPS wheel. So oh yeah, can you just take me through the VPS wheel? What, 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 what are those things on that? So we have one piece below, which is what we have, have achieved. Um, zero defects, which is what we are trying to achieve. It's still, obviously we have a, the operators who are, are human and we have human error. Um, it's a pool system, so station four, will be the ones that they, they finish their car and want the next car. So it's pulling from the front, it's not a push, so we don't have that backup of material. Um, and obviously they're working to attach the heartbeat of the company, which is 34 minutes. It has changed in the past, it will change in the future. We have a time scale to work to, which we have the initial data of all the timings that we would work from to create a new Yamazumi, trial it out again to see whether we can hit the units um, with the required people um, and machines and then escalate when we need. Most of the time it seems that we need a couple more associates and machines to if we're rising in volume. Again, we could decrease in volume and therefore we need, might need to reduce head count, um, etc. And when, so you have materials coming through, mm -hmm. and then the setup might need to change. It, like the threads would need to change, or the material's going to be different. Yeah. How is that accommodated? So the layout is very flexible. Um, it tends to be the layout that will change more than if volume increases, the materials stay the same. Um, so it, it would just be looked at how. Um, how to minimise the waste of motion and the layout will be planned around that. We have had times where we've incorporated new um, threads so we need to find space to store the, the inventory of that um, but it would tend to be that another 
how it would discontinue and therefore it would take that frame. So, if, so yeah, yeah. So if the customer wanted a different thread, mm -hmm. does that stop the machine until the new bobbin is put on or something? So, uh, so at the beginning of, of each tank, so every car that comes through it tends to be that there will be a different colour. Yeah. Um, and therefore, we will. They have a three-minute setup time, so that they have they can change their threads, um, feet, and then they can test the machine again. So that that's built into their tap time because it's a regular occurrence. And what about maintenance on the machines? How's that taking place? Or replacement of needles or stuff? Like uh, that? Maintenance. So the maintenance again. So we have the TPM. So at the end of shift and the start shift, they have five minutes both sides so that they can change their needle when they come into shift and clean down the machine at the end. So that's all based around the 34 minute tax and the volume, um, as well as having planned maintenance in for maintenance department to carry out. Okay, and then finally just back to the um, future state that you mentioned of. So there was conveyor belt um, and fleece yes. sewing being done fully automated. Yeah. So how might you, so their ideas, how might you go ahead to assess the impact of implementing those ideas? So the conveyor belt, I think we'd have, we'd, we'd have to look at the sources uh, and how the programming settings, so how often do they move, is it, um, <coughs> is it a start stop or is it autumn? I mean, is it automatic or semi-automated? Um, how big it is, or the infrastructure? Would it affect the floor to get to get that impact in? Um, I think that we have to time the currently how long it takes for them to push the car forward to the when we implement uh, conveyor belt. How how long how long it takes to move the conveyor belt forward to see how much time we've saved. But ergonomically, it would be better for someone rather than pushing a trolley forward. Their parts just arrive in front of them. Yeah. Um, so it just reduces that that physical aspect of, of moving the materials. Um, and then the fleece sewing machine, again, it would mean an, an operator loading in the parts. So essentially, while it's operating, they can go and load up another machine. So it would save operator's time because the machine wouldn't need to be overseen while it's um, completing the task. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Very Thank good. You. Yeah.